today's sermon is titled, Who is Jesus Christ? Who is Jesus Christ? Today is Psalm Sunday, April 2nd, 2023, Psalm Sunday. It's the day we remember and celebrate Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem as Savior and as King. So why did Jesus allow the people to honor him this way? Why did Jesus prepare for them to worship him? Because he prepared for it. He told his disciples to go get the coat in which no man has ever sat on before. And we saw what he did with that coat. And we're going to look at the scriptures uh, specifically talking about that later on in the, in the sermon. So to answer your question, who is Jesus Christ? I'm going to tell you who he is. And then we're going to look at the Bible scriptures, the holy Bible scriptures, to prove who he is. Jesus is God. Jesus acknowledges this, and the Holy Bible points to him in the old the Holy Bible in the Old Testament and the New Testament points to uh to Jesus as being the one and only God. So we're gonna look at these uh, Bible scriptures to examine how God shows us He is Jesus Christ. So let's start. In the Old Testament in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17, God acknowledges as the God is acknowledged as uh God is acknowledged as a God that no other God can compare to. And the other no other no other gods, lowercase G O D S can compare to. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17. For the Lord your God is the God of gods and the Lord of Lords. The great, the mighty, and the awesome God who does not show partiality nor take a bribe. In John chapter 10, verses 31 through 38, Jesus is acknowledging himself to be the God of gods and the Lord of lords because that is who he is. Let's look at that scripture. John chapter 10, verses 31 through 38. But again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I have, I have said, You are gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, what about the one whom the Father set apart as his very own and sent, and sent into the world? Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said I am God's son? Do not believe me unless I do the works of my Father. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and know and understand that the Father is in me and I is I in the Father. Jesus came straight out and told the Jewish, the Jewish opponents that the Father is in him and he is in the Father. But let's continue to look at proof that Jesus is God. In the Old Testament, the Holy Bible states in Isaiah chapter 44, verses 22 through 24, 8. Turn to me and be saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is not no other. By myself I swung from my mouth, has gone out in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear alliance. Only in the Lord it shall be said of me, a righteousness and strength. Now, let's look at what it says on this same topic in the New Testament. In Romans chapter 14, verse 11, the Bible states, For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee sh shall bow before bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. This is referring to Isaiah. So this scripture in Romans 14, 11 is referring to the scripture in the Old Testament, Isaiah uh, 45 through 23. Now let's read uh, in the New Testament, Philippians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. Here we're going to see how the Holy, Holy Bible Tell us who did that, how the Holy Bible tell us Jesus is God. Jesus is a God in which every knee shall bow to and every tongue shall confess that 
that he is God. So in Philippians chapter 2, verses 10 through 11, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's how we know who Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ is God. The same God that called himself in the Old Testament, the great I am. Uh, I am. The, the same God who called himself I am. The same God who called himself most high. The same God who said he's the God of David. The same God who said he's the God of Jacob. Jesus Christ is that same God. Let's look at other Bible verses that point to Jesus Christ as the one and only true God. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. The Holy Virgin shall be with a child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. God came in human form as the Son of God, as Jesus Christ. So God, when he came in human form as Jesus Christ, the newborn babe, he, and he dwelt on this earth in human form, he walked upon this earth, God with us. We had God walking upon this earth as a human. John chapter 14, verse 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. Then he explained, no one comes to the Father except through me. See, there are some people who want to accept the God of the Old, Old Testament, Most High, Jehovah God, they want to accept the God of the Old Testament, the God of Israel, the God of Jacob, the God of Abraham, the God of David, the God of Moses. They want to take, accept the God of the Old Testament as their God, but they choose to reject Jesus Christ. And they think they're going to make it to heaven. They are being deceived. You cannot accept the God of the Old Testament, Most High, and reject Jesus Christ and think you're going to make it to heaven. Jesus said, no one comes to the Father but through me. The God, the Father, we uh, recognize God the Father in the Old Testament most high God, most high. Jesus Christ is most high. Jesus Christ, God, is saying, you can't get to the Father, most high, if you reject me. If you reject me, Jesus Christ. So you have to understand that God sent Jesus Christ himself, pretty much himself, as a sacrificial lamb of God. So he can take away the sins of this world. If you reject Jesus Christ, you rejecting, you rejecting the Lamb of God. You rejecting what he gives, the free gift he's given you, the free gift of salvation. The, the, you, you rejecting his blood. You, his blood is what makes us righteous when we, we confess our sins. Except Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he cleans us from all unrighteousness with his blood. We need his blood to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We need his blood to put us in right standing with God so we can go before the holy God. If you reject Jesus Christ, then you reject his blood that will cleanse you and that will save you. So you can't see the Father without accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's why Jesus says here, no one comes to the Father but through me. Jesus said, you have to, if you want to see the Father, 
If you want to see the Father, the Most High, God, God of David, God of Abraham, God of Moses, Jehovah, Jesus said, then you have to come to me. You have to accept me as your Lord and Savior. You have to accept me as who I am, Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Jesus Christ as God. There's no other way around it. There is no, by no other name, anyone can be saved except through Jesus Christ. That's why I hear John 14, 6, Jesus said, Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God. And the real, this is the Amplified Bible of uh, saying the same scripture, John 14, 6. Uh, I like how I word it because it comes straight to you, just like it did. Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God and the real truth and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Further, John chapter 5, verse 20 says, and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. The Holy Bible comes straight out and let us know who God is. God is Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 and 6 says, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. So again, the scriptures let us know Jesus is God. There's no other way to put it so plainly. It's in the Holy Bible. John chapter 1 verse 18 says, No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is himself God. And is the closest relationship with the Father has made him known. Jesus is God. That's why we worship him. That's the true reason why he was worshipped on this, this song, that Palm Sunday. Because he is God. The one and only God. The God of Moses. The God of David. Jehovah Jireh. That's him. Oh, him. That's Jesus. I am. That's Jesus. The God of Moses. That's Jesus. Jesus. The God of Elijah. That's Jesus Christ. That's Jesus Christ. El Shaddai. That's Jesus Christ. Yahweh. That's Jesus Christ. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. And the word was with God, and the word what? The word was God. Let me read that again. John 1 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now let's look at John uh, chapter 1, verse 14. It says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Who was who became flesh and dwelt among us? Jesus Christ. Let me keep reading. It says, John 1, 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The scriptures pointed to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ acknowledged that he is the Word. He is the Word of God. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. Who's, who made the sacrifice and shed his blood for us? The scripture brought to him. Jesus Christ did that. So Acts 20, 28, where it says, be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. They're talking about Jesus. Jesus is who uh, about shed his blood for us. He was the Lamb of God. He is the Lamb of God. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 through 16 says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and rages war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many uh, diamonds. And he has a name written on him which no one knows except himself. He is clothed 
with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. We already looked at the scripture to see that Jesus Christ's name is also the Word of God. And let me continue to read. And the armies which are in heaven, clothed in fine living, white and clean, were following him on white horses. From, from his mouth comes a sharp, sharp sword, so that with it he may strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings. And Lord of Lords, they are the scriptures talking about Jesus Christ. So let, let me go back, like where it says in uh, Revelation chapter 19, 11 to 16, where it says, uh, He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and His name is called the Word of God. How do we know it's talking about Jesus? We look, I already looked at John 1 1 and John 1 14. It says, In John 1 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God and the word and the word was God. So I'm going to Jesus in the beginning. See Jesus God. God is the creator of all things. God was in the beginning. In John 1 14 and the word became flesh. And it says, and the word, word is capitalized because it's recognized as a name. See the word, Jesus is Jesus Christ is the word. We see it pointed out here in John 1 1, John 1 14, and Revelation as we read uh, chapter 19, 11 through 16, all point of Jesus Christ. Jesus is God. In the Old Testament, God identified himself as I am. So we're going to look and see how God called himself I am in the Old Testament, and then how Jesus identified himself as that's by the same name I am. To show that he is God. Exodus chapter 3 verse uh, 13, 13 and 14. Then Moses asked God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers have sent me to you. And they asked me, what is his name? What should I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God identifies his name as I am. God has many names that he identifies himself as. I am is one of them. Jesus, now let's look and see how Jesus identifies himself as I am, which means he recognizes himself and, and, and then acknowledge that he is the one and only true God. John chapter 8, verses 57 and 58, the people said, you aren't even 50 years old. How can you say you have seen Abraham? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. Before Abraham was ever was even born, I am. Jesus speaking the truth. The Holy Bible states in John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the, the word was God. So Jesus was at the beginning because he's God. Jesus existed before Abraham. Jesus, I'm telling you the truth. Before Abraham was even born, he said, I am. See, he know, he know his name. I am. He know he told the Israelites in the Old Testament, told Moses to, to, that's the name to tell him. Tell them, I am. And then Jesus brought this, this name up again, I am. John chapter 13, verses 18 and 19 says, I am not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen, but this is for, to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. I am telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. It's known he used the same words, I am who I am, the same words that the, uh, God gave to Moses in Exodus, in Exodus chapter 3 verse uh, 14 to tell the people who he is. I am who I am. I am. That's Jesus Christ. God identified himself as the first and last in the Old Testament. And also uh, 
Jesus identified himself as the first and last in the New Testament. Let's look at those scriptures. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Jesus Christ is only God. We're going to see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6, how he identified himself as the first and last. Yet, for us, there is one God, the Father from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. The scripture came straight out to tell us Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last. Jesus Christ is the only God, the only God. Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, 18 says, When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man. And he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. And I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and of Hades. This is Jesus Christ speaking. He is the first and the last. He the one who died on the cross by sins. He died, and he came back to life. The, that's why we celebrate, get ready to celebrate Easter, starting with this Palm Sunday, recognizing Jesus' sacrifice, recognizing him as Lord of Lord, the King of Kings, recognizing him as the Savior of the world, recognizing his, his birth, his death, his resurrection, recognize his goodness. Only, and let's look at more scriptures that prove Jesus is God. Only God has the authority to forgive people of their sins. We see in the scriptures how Jesus used that authority. Jesus used that authority because he is God. Here in the Old Testament, in Psalm 32, verse 5, David is talking to God, and he acknowledges God as the one who forgives him of his sins. So we're going to look and see how God is the one. The God of the Old Testament is the one who forgives sins. And then we're going to see how Jesus used that, that power and authority to forgive sins because he is God. Psalm chapter 32, verse 5 in the Old Testament, that I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. In the New Testament, the Bible states in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, repent then and turn to God. So the who comes up with why is it certain God? So that your sins may be wiped out, the times of refreshing may come from the Lord. In the New Testament, we will go on to see how in John 1, 29, John the Baptist described Jesus. How John the Baptist described Jesus? John says uh, in John chapter 1, verse 29, the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. God, only, only God has the power to take away the sin of the world. Jesus, uh, uh, John the Baptist recognized Jesus as a Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Why? Because Jesus is God. In the New Testament, Revelation chapter 14, verse, in Revelation chapter 17, verse 14, it says, These will raise war against the Lamb. Speaking, speaking of the Lamb of God, the elder Lamb is capitalized. And the Lamb will overcome them because he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And those who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Lord, Lord, King of Kings, the Lamb of God, the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God. In the New Testament, in Luke chapter 7, verse Verses 47, 48, it says, we see another example of how Jesus shows the authority he has and he uses it. Luke chapter 7, verse 47, 48. I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but he who is forgiven little loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Because Jesus is God. The God who has the power to forgive us of our sins. And to take away the sins of the world. 
Luke chapter 5, verse 17 through 25. This is one day Jesus was teaching, and the Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on the mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles in the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easy to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So even though Jesus called himself the Son of Man, which he is the Son of Man, he's still also God, the Father. Let's continue reading. It says, so he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on and went home. Praising God. This, Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 25, is an illustration of Jesus pointing to himself as God. Jesus is God. Let's look at more authority Christ demonstrate. Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head of, over every power and authority. The word of God let us know Jesus is the head of, over every power and every authority because Jesus is God. John chapter 5 verse 18. This was why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God because Jesus is God. John chapter, chapter 10 and verse 30. The word of Jesus said, the Father and I are one, because they are one. Jesus is God. And that's why we celebrate him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords on this Palm Sunday. Continue to worship him and recognize him as God, who he truly is. God bless you.